Welcome to the Sprint 6 uh, mega demo for the Arclight Sprint. Uh, this demo, uh, the Sprint was two weeks long, so we're demoing a lot of the work that got done in the past two weeks. And we're excited to share with you some updates. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, the Arclight demo site. It's been updated uh, as of this morning to the latest master release of Arclight. And we can see some changes and things that have happened there. I've also configured um, the EAD uh, with the unit ID uh, Rosenberg to uh, be configured um, uh, to access the EAD from the uh, Uni University of Michigan site here. And I've also set up the Special Collections Research Center at University of Michigan in the ArcLight demo uh, to use our new feature uh, Aeon Web EAD request. So um, this uh, uses a configuration similar to the Google Form um, EAD configuration. And I'm going to be demoing the Aeon Web EAD but, uh, request, but we also implemented um, Aeon uh, Form uh, based uh, request as well. And that got finished up in this sprint as well. So uh, one thing to uh, point out here is um, I can configure my Aon instance URL and kind of the mappings that I want to get passed through to that. And then if I have an EAD that's downloadable at a certain URL, I can configure that here in my downloads config. Now this is extendable. So because the ArcLight demo has EADs from a lot of different sites, may not make sense to kind of have a default configuration, but if I was an ArcLight instance that had kind of a standard way to do this, it could be, uh, could be done. And then, so what we get here um, in the UI here is on items that are requestable, and that's also configurable how to determine what's requestable or not. I get a URL, um, and that URL um, <clears throat> goes to the Aon instance, it passes through the form values that were specified in the configuration. And this value here um, per uh, the implementation is uh, the Aon uh, web EAD, uh, URL to the EAD, or it should be. Um, so when I click request, it takes me through to the University of Michigan login site. So I, I'm hoping that if uh, somebody from Michigan had this going, uh, this this would be uh, this would set up the request there. Uh, the next thing to note on this page is you'll see an update to um, the collection context here. So this work is in flux, but we wanted to share some of it that's already in. Instead of heading navigations here, we have um, lists with the current item is highlighted, uh, similar to before. And if you have um, an item that's uh, more nested than that, you'll see the nesting of the lists here. Now, this isn't the final design, so I don't, you know, I'm, I, I'm cautious to share too much, but um, it's been designed in a way that uh, this will be a little bit expandable and collapsible, but we wanted to give more of the collection context rather than kind of just a, a small slice of it. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Sean. Okay, so we have taken some steps in the past couple of weeks to better accommodate non-collection finding aids. And by non-collection, I mean EADs that have uh, something other than level equals collection at their top level uh, Arcdesk element. Um, so we do have a few such examples in the Arclight demo. Um, if I go and browse repositories, if I'm looking at the Central Michigan Clark Library, all four of their, their collections here um, have at the top level um, level equals record group instead of le level equals collection. Um, you can see those now are correctly listed when we're browsing uh, Clark as a repository and I can see uh, all collections here. Uh, previously, these were either not displaying um, and or worse, uh, throwing errors if you would uh, hit these in the, in the UI. Uh, so we can see now these are, are uh, showing up and they have a uh, collection show page. 
uh, like this one. Um, so similarly, if I am uh, browsing uh, repositories, or browsing collections, um, those non-collection finding aids will appear um, if, I, if I browse all collections. Um, and if I wanted to search, uh, previously these kinds of collections uh, would not uh, appear correctly and uh, would also uh, not appear correctly if we try to use the group by collection feature. Here's an example from Bentley. This, uh, this information was previously not displaying as the, the header for this group, uh, but now it is. Uh, and one more thing I wanted to show uh, in the level facet, uh, in a case like record group, uh, rather than displaying the EAD code for record group, there's now a little bit of a uh, translation that happens to make it a little more human readable. Uh, the words record group uh, capitalized with the space between them. And that is all I wanted to show. So I will hand it over to James. Okay, show my screen now. So um, firstly, uh, throughout this uh, past sprint, there have been a number of improvements that have been introduced to the uh, search, search results interface. Um, Gordon Leacock and Gary Geisler have collaborated and introduced some um, great improvements to um, individual search result items. Um, they now have some great uh, repository um, and uh, component level icons for representing these. Um, and Jennifer Vine also has uh, greatly improved, has introduced some improvements to the search results uh, user interface as well. Um, previously, there were some um, unnecessary uh, collection counts that were rendered here, and uh, those are, are no longer uh, rendered. Um, further, there are also some um, additional features that were introduced that related to, that were um, uh, introduced at the level of um, components and collections. And this is basically uh, an attempt at improving, um, introducing download links. So right below, <coughs> excuse me, the request button, you will find links to both uh, finding aids and EADs that are linked to within the EAD XML files. And uh, please be aware that this is actually something that's also being introduced at the very top level of um, each collection, uh, right below the repository. Um, and those are the changes, those are some of the changes that have been introduced. I will now hand it off to, um, I will now hand it off to uh, Leah Ann. Hi. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a number of the accessibility improvements that we've made over this last sprint. Um, we do have an open ongoing ticket with accessibility issues that we can fix as we discover them. And uh, a lot of these changes were made um, in Arclight, but some of them were also made upstream in Blacklight. Um, first, I'm going to talk about some of the Blacklight changes. Um, the first one um, is we're adding skip links on each of the pages. And these are invisible links that appear um, when in focus while tabbing through the content and they will allow users to skip to content, skip to the search box, or even skip to the search uh, first search result depending on the page they're on. Um, uh, also in Blacklight, we added a main tag and ARIA labels to the base template in Blacklight. And we added ARIA labels to the sidebar and to the content sections. And all of these labels are now going to be managed using I18N translations. Um, in Arclight, um, as James just said, we moved the number of collections from the repositories page. Um, we removed some unnecessary H1 tags and we replaced them with span tags. We updated some inconsistent heading tags on the repositories page. Um, we updated the page titles to match H1 tag on each page. So for example, on the repositories page, you'll now get repositories up at the, on the tab at the top. Um, on the collection and component show pages, here's an example of that in the tabbed content areas. Um, we've updated each of the tab sections with screen reader only text that matches the text on the tab. And this text is also managed using I18N translations. 
Um, we've re added screen reader only labels to the bookmark icons on this page where we have bookmark icons now. Um, we've um, added labels. The labels were removed when we switched from text um, into using an icon. So now we've um, added the labels back with, on the bookmark icons. Um, we've made the search breadcrumbs a nav landmark. So up here in the search breadcrumbs, um, these are now a nav landmark. And we hid the pseudo content, which are these icons in the breadcrumbs. Um, we've hid that from screen readers. And um, those are all of the accessibility updates we've been making over this past sprint. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Jesse. OK. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to show uh, today is some of the improvements that we've made around the um, compact view. Um, we had showed so some uh, additions of content uh, to this view, but I did just want to point out that um, uh, particularly where we now have the ability to uh, add to our uh, selections or remove from our selections or bookmarks um, the containers as well as um, the um, icon for whether the thing uh, or its descendants include online content. So um, and previously, we were just kind of showing some titles and some updates to the breadcrumbs here. But now we've really updated um, this layout to be a, uh, to include uh, much more of the content that we want in the compact view um, and are still making some improvements to how this will work on um, smaller screens, um, but just showing kind of on the more of the desktop view here. Um, another thing that I wanted to show was uh, an improvement that we made in Blacklight around the responsiveness of the sort and per page um, widgets uh, or drop downs. Um, so kind of what you can see here is we were trying to prevent at um, this kind of smaller screen uh, level to have, uh, trying to prevent these buttons from stacking on top of one another. Um, what we've done now is updated the labels to include some markup with bootstrap utility classes that will hide um, certain content at the smallest level. So now you can see we get these buttons side by side, and um, we have the uh, sort and the content below. Um, the content that is being hidden is still screen reader um, accessible. It's just visible, uh, invisible uh, for the uh, sighted user. Um, and then similarly for the uh, per page drop down, just including the number. Um, this has all been done in a backwards compatible way. Um, so if this is something that folks have updated in their own Blacklight um, instance, they might not take a direct advantage of it if they've overridden it. Um, but this is uh, available now for any Blacklight adopter. 